Heritage International Headquarters in Fort Mill, South Carolina. This is Prophetic Perspectives on Current Events with Rick Joyner. Well, do you think it's possible to press into God's heart, to see what's inside his heart about your city, your community, your church, and then start to participate with heaven to bring that into your community, to bring that into your church and your city? I'm talking with someone today who's doing exactly that, along with the help of his sweet family, his amazing church family. Sitting in the studio with me today is Jason Hooper. Welcome, Jason, to the studio. Thank you so much for having me, Bridget. I'm so excited to be here. It's great to have you. Jason was on the Morningstar leadership team for years, was launched into ministry, and is now in um, Birmingham, Alabama, pastoring a church there, Kingsway Church. That's right, right, Kingsway Church in Birmingham, Alabama. With his sweet wife, Tina, who we missed on this trip. He's in town for another event and just agreed to stop in and spend some time with us and share a little bit about what's going on in Birmingham. So, Jason, you were telling me yesterday a little bit about your church and what you guys yeah. are doing to love on your community. Let's talk about it. Absolutely. You know, well, and it, you know, really it goes back, you know, I mean, the way you even, you know, introduced this, talking about, you know, to press into God and to partner with the promises of the Lord in our life. Yeah. You know, when I remember when we first came to Birmingham, you know, it was like finding the home we never knew we had. And, you know, it's one thing to go to a city and to do ministry. It's another thing to cultivate a community and really foster, a, not just, not to plant a church, but really to have a family. Yeah. And we try to do everything that we're doing in Birmingham uh, from a place of family, from a place of who the Lord is to us, who he is in us. But one of the things the Lord spoke to us when we first came, and this was, I remember back in December, uh, this was December 12, 2012, was he spoke to us about escrow accounts that have been opened up and uh, spiritually. Right. between the years 1983 and 1988 that were prophetic promises that were given that were partnered with for a season. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things we were just having a, a conversation with several leaders and one of them said that, you know, he said, everybody loves to hear the promise when it comes, but few are willing to partner with that promise to see it come to pass. Right. And so the Lord spoke to us back then that between the year 1983 and 1988, there was just this wonderful season of prophetic grace and partnership and unity in the body of Christ in our city. And, and people were beginning to believe God and beginning to work together toward what God had promised to do. But then, I mean, you know, sometimes things happen, mm -hmm. you know, and discouragement had yeah. got in. But the Lord had uh, given us a word that there was this, this season of grace between 1983 and 1988 that was these escrow accounts being deposited, but deferment of hope had got in that had caused a lot of what God was wanting to do in and through the city to be delayed, mm -hmm. not forgotten, mm -hmm. not detoured, but to delayed. And so he began to speak about these escrow accounts being re-released with interest. In other wow. words, we could pick up the baton of the leg of the race of those who had gone before us. And as those escrow accounts are re-released with interest, it says that keys would be given, doors would be open, and promises would be occupied. And so in that, I knew that we weren't going to pioneer a new work, but we were really going to honor those who had gone before us. And in that, God would begin to make room for what Bobby Connor called when he came to be with us the very first time. He said, we were the right people in the right place at the right time to do the new and never before seen. He said it'd be a radical reformation that would so redefine Christianity. It would look so much like the Lord that some people would question in the church if it was God. Wow. And, There's so much in that. Yeah. That's and awesome. so, you know, and so we said, what does that look like? And, you know, I just think it looks like Jesus. I think it yeah. looks like, you know, a lot of times in churches, we can either be fully Holy Spirit or fully harvest. You know, right. There's, and I feel like that there's a way that we're supposed to walk that is both. Mm -hmm. to where we can embrace the fullness of Holy Spirit, but also recognize that we're not just going after God for ourselves. but we're saying, Lord, I'm asking you to touch me so I can become your touch. Yeah. I'm not asking you just to speak to me so that I can hear you for myself, but I'm asking for you to speak to me in such a way that I can become your word in my community. And, you know, and a lot of times, you know, we, we, especially in churches and in Christianity, we think about the spiritual application of that and not the practical application. Right. And I'm, I'm real big on partnering with the promise practically as well as prophetically. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the promises to our house and our church is that we would be a house of bread, that we would be a storehouse. You know, we've got a, an amazing facility. It's 44,400 square feet. We've been in renovations and restoration, uh, just making it all that it can be. But, but more than the natural renovation and restoration is the spiritual restoration and transformation of our city that we're seeing in and through this as we've really embraced a storehouse ministry and mandate. And, you know, and that's to provide food in his house. And I believe it's also to provide food through his house. Mm -hmm. Worship is, is, a, is a real, um, it's a high place in our heart as a house and as a body. And Jesus in Matthew 25, he said, you know, that whatever we do to the least of these, we've done unto him. Mm -hmm. 
And so I just caught this vision that when we feed the hungry, when we clothe the naked, when we preach the gospel to the poor, that's worship. Yeah. It's not just a humanitarian effort, but it's actually seeing the kingdom of God going out in power as we not just meet a natural need. Jesus said it like this in John 6, you know, it was the very first food ministry, right? All of a sudden there's 5,000 and their families that are there. They've been following Jesus for days and now they're hungry. And Jesus looks to his disciples and says, hey, what do you think we should do? knowing in himself what he was about to do. And they started trying to think about, well, how can we do this? We could never have enough to meet this great need that's in front of us. Right. But he knew that there was a young boy there with two fish and five loaves. And if he was willing to give what he had into the hands of God with a thankful heart, it was already more than enough. And yeah. so we've recognized that even our two fish and five loaves that God has given to us, when given to the Lord and given away, it's always more than enough to meet every need. And this is what Jesus said in John 6. He said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never hunger, and he who believes in me will never thirst. Yeah. And what we've been seeing the Lord do, of course, in and through the life of our church, and there's so many things just through the life and community of our church. But one of the things I'm really excited about right now is our food ministry and yeah. the way that God is impacting <laughs> our city. And I mean, I got to share a little bit about, about it with you yesterday. And you know, it's hard for me to share without becoming emotional because yeah. I'm seeing not just people come for a handout, but I'm seeing them receive a hand up. Yeah. And I'm seeing that they're not just coming to have their bellies filled, but to have their hearts begin to overflow. Mm -hmm. Because what's happening is as they're coming in need of natural sustenance, they're receiving spiritual substance. Right. And, um, and we're seeing a move of God happening in and through this food ministry that is transforming our city and the community that God has entrusted to us. That's so awesome. I'm so excited to talk more about it. I've been watching some of the footage on your website, and, I'm, and I, I know that our viewers are going to enjoy hearing us get deeper into those subjects. So thank you, Jason, and we'll be right back. We are going to give you the most incredible deal you've ever heard of, really. The Final Quest, my all-time bestseller, sold in the millions. The Call, The Torch, and The Sword, both in the same genre as The Final Quest, also top sellers. The Path, my most recent one, in the same genre. All these are together, these prophetic books, normally about $70. We're going to let you have this entire set for just $39. And that includes shipping. But here's the deal. You can do all of your Christmas shopping right now because you can order as many additional sets as you want for half of that, just $20. Get this enlightening book special today from Rick Joyner for only $39. Visit MorningstarTV.com or call 1-888-778-7141. Well, welcome back to Prophetic Perspectives. I'm Bridget Lemus, and I have Jason Hooper in the studio with me today. Jason's been sharing with us about his church and his community in Birmingham, Alabama. He uh, is really has had a unique way that they're loving on their church family and their community. Jason, you were telling me yesterday, in a little bit we touched on it in the last segment, about a feeding ministry that your church has sort of launched, and it's growing up into this um, shift in your community and yeah. your city. Tell us about it. Well, absolutely. You know, like so much of what we do in this city, you know, we've entered into the labors of those who've gone before us, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, you know, uh, there was a man by the name of Bill French who started the ministry center where we're, we're currently based that we purchased last year. And years and years ago, probably 30 some years ago, he would uh, he would just take his van and he would go pick up day old bread and he would drive into the trailer park and just take bread to those who are hungry. Mm -hmm. And so really it began back then. And so I want to honor how things began. Yeah. And um, because I believe a great privilege is when we honor those who go before us, we can dwell long in the land that God is bringing us into. Mm -hmm. And so we've been seeing uh, just an amazing move of the Lord in and through this food ministry, because I think a lot of times there's churches who they want to provide food because they know it's a need. You know, Isaiah mm -hmm. 58, of course, you know, share your bread with the hungry, you know, satisfy the afflicted soul, all those kind of things. But but one of the things that we started seeing a real transformation in, in our food ministry when we became first and foremost with the gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, in fact, this past Tuesday was a wonderful example. You know, as we were waiting for folks to come in, I mean, we ended up uh, being able to minister to uh, 191 families 
which wow. you know provided groceries for 526 people and That's huge. and we and we load them up. I mean, we load up their shopping carts. We do everything from uh, from bringing them in, giving them that word, ministering to whatever they have need of. Then we, it's a full shopping experience to where they have shopping carts. We have pre-made ba- boxes and bags. We assign shoppers to them that are able to help them based on their certain dietary That's needs awesome. and things that they can eat and can't eat and helping them make right decisions. And then like we've got all of our homeschool kids like my boy. I love that. that I saw uh, some pictures. Of yeah, that. they're they're pushing the carts. They're like the the cart valets getting everybody to their cars, <laughs> and it's amazing because what we're seeing is even before people get into the meeting, get into the seat, simply when they come to the property, God is healing their body, God mm-hmm. is delivering their soul, and the presence of God is tangible. Yeah. And so they talk about you know we used to come to get food, now we come because. Jesus. We come because of the presence. We come not because of what we get. We come because of what we feel. And so this past Tuesday, uh, just a few, as I was just kind of greeting folks and we were waiting, trying to get everybody into the building, um, you know, people just kept saying, Jason, Pastor Jason, can you pray for this person? And Pastor Jason, they need healing. And Pastor Jason, this person over here. And, and so I was like, wow, there's, you know, there's a demand for healing today. And so, you know, before I share what I was going to share, let's just pray on mass for healing. Yeah. And, um, you know, and a lot of times we pray personal prayers with them. Hey, if you need healing in your body, raise your hand. We're going to have one of our volunteers, one of our ministry team members come to you. But this time I said, you know, for the sake of time, let's just, I, I believe there's such a, such a great need. If you need healing in your body, just raise your hand. And of course, so many hands go up. And I said, okay, now take that hand and just put it on the part of your body that, that needs healing. And we just prayed a simple prayer. You know, it, people aren't healed because of our fancy prayers. Right. Jesus said in John 6, 28, they asked us, they said, how can we do the works of God? Verse 29, he said, this is the work, believe. Mm-hmm. Believe on him whom God has sent. And so we said, Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you're healing bodies right now. And just started commanding certain things to leave bodies, certain pains to go, certain infirmities to be removed. And all of a sudden, you began to start hearing and seeing and feeling the commotion that was taking place as healings and miracles began to manifest. And I said, now, wait a minute. I said, if you can feel in your body right now, the, the pain that you needed to go has gone. There's a sign that the infirmity or disease has left. Tumors are dissolving. Changes are happening. Right now, I want you to take that hand and begin to wave it. And I mean, just hands all over, you know, to the point where like, wow. well, maybe they didn't understand the question because it's like everyone who put their hand up to be healed got healed. Wow. And I said, well, we've got to hear about this. And, you know, and, and so I just went around with the microphone and just started interviewing them. And it was amazing. The testimony of Jesus, spirit of prophecy, and you could feel tangible waves of the goodness of God mm-hmm. coming in. I mean, you could feel it permeating the room as they began to testify. And one of the things I loved is they weren't church testimonies. Yeah. There was no Christianese. There was no <laughs> knowing what to say or what not to say. I, I remember uh, one beautiful girl named Carol, uh, one lady that came in. And I think you guys have a picture of me high-fiving her when she was giving her testimony. And she came in just talking about, you know, because she was hearing all of the other testimonies of like the pain leaving the knees, of the scoliosis leaving the back, the tumors dissolving, those kind of things. And she just goes in and she begins to start saying, listen, I was depressed. I've been living in an oppressive state for many, many years. But when I came in here today, it was like something left my body Man. and joy came into my heart. And she awesome. starts, she starts on the microphone, grabbing my hand going, he's real, <laughs> he's real, he's real. And then there was this, uh, there, there was another lady there, Haviza, and uh, who also got baptized that day, not just saved, but also got baptized. And she actually testified that she had had a pain in her neck on the right hand side that had gone through her shoulder, down her back and into her leg. And when she was standing in line before she ever got into the prayer of healing, just when she was standing in there in the presence of the Lord in the atmosphere of faith, she felt like something got ripped off of her, like someone took a purse off of her shoulder. Amazing. And um, and just because, and I said, listen, that's Isaiah 10, 27. Mm-hmm. It says it'll come to pass in that day, the yoke will be removed and the burden be destroyed. Right. And so and so as we're getting testimonies of everybody being here, I got down on my knees with one gentleman. He was actually going through a, um, a, a pretty intense deliverance right there without anybody casting anything out. Just when he got in the presence of the Lord, a lot of what he had been holding on to began to leave his body in a tangible and physical way and spiritual way. And so I got down on my knees and as I began to talk to him. You could feel the goodness of God beginning to move through and you didn't have to preach an altar call. You just simply needed to give it. Mm. And so right there from my knees, just in the middle aisle, I just started just, just, just saying, listen, if you're, if, if you're here this morning and the enemy has taken up room in your heart and you want to put an eviction notice on your heart where the devil's got to go and his stuff's got to leave with him, but you want to invite the Lord Jesus to come into your heart. And I'm not talking about praying a prayer to go to heaven when you die. I said, listen, the gospel of the kingdom is not about going to heaven when you die. Yeah. Jesus, I, I personally don't believe that Jesus died simply for us to go to heaven when we die. 
I believe that Jesus died to get heaven into us. I agree. And so we gave this presentation and I said, listen, I said, if you've never prayed this before or you're far from God right now and you want to come running back to the Father right now, this is you. Stand up right now. And 175 people what? gave their life to Jesus no right way. then. Oh, it was that's amazing. Awesome. And so then our ministry team started, get, we give, you give uh, brand new Bibles to everybody. And that's, you know, and so of course we, we started giving Bibles to those folks who had made that decision. And, and then it was time for me to preach my message. You know, what well, I had prepared, <laughs> which was just awesome. Acts 8, Acts 8, 37, Perfect. when Philip comes in contact with the Ethiopian eunuch and he's and the eunuch is reading from the book of Isaiah, but he doesn't understand what he's reading. Mm-hmm. And so Philip begins to bring understanding. And so then the Ethiopian eunuch says, what must I do to be baptized? And so Philip says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you may. And he said, that's it. Just b- believe on the Lord and you may be baptized. And that was what I had planned to talk about. And so I just stood up. I said, listen, out of so many of you right now that have made this step to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, not just as the salvation, as the savior of your soul, but as the Lord of your life. Mm-hmm. I said, we want to give you an opportunity to this morning to be water baptized. And what was so amazing was there was a, there was a, a woman named Debbie. And, um, yeah, and, and for four months, I've been praying for her. And when I first met her, she would come in and, and it was hard for her to make eye contact. You know, she was kind of off to herself and you could tell she had gone through uh, uh, some hard seasons in her life and been in some, some rough places. But we just kept loving her. And I just, every time I'd see her, I'd come up next to her and just, hey, how you doing? Whether she would talk or not, I just wanted her to know that we're here. And um, she was the first one. In fact, when I walked in that morning, she looked at me, she said, Pastor Jason, today's my day. I said, what do you mean? She said, I'm ready to give my heart to Jesus. I'm ready to be water baptized. That is awesome. And so she was the first one that stood up to be water baptized. And we had a total of eight folks that day water baptized. We baptize at every single one of our services. That's awesome. We've had over 200 folks water baptized since the beginning um, of, of 2016. And, and um, you know, I could tell you a little bit more about how that came to pass and what God spoke to our heart in making preparation for the harvest and why water baptism is an important part of the harvest. Sounds good. I'm looking forward to hearing more about it. We'll be right back. You are invited to our most anticipated event of the year, the 2016 Morningstar Partners Weekend. This year, Morningstar is hosting an exclusive event on June 3rd and 4th to honor our partners. Come enjoy a revitalizing atmosphere and experience the dynamic impact you have made to your faithful involvement with Morningstar. During this weekend, you will hear life-changing messages from Bobby Connor, experience extraordinary worship with Susie Urai, and catch new vision for your future with our very own Dave Yarns and Rick Joyner. Refresh your vision. Reunite with friends. Revive your spirit at Partners Weekend 2016. This weekend is exclusively for Morningstar Partners. All meals are included, along with a grand gala banquet. This is the event you don't want to miss. Register before May 1st to receive a 25% discount. Due to the special nature of this meeting, registration is limited to 500 attendees. Our Partners Weekends sell out every year, so reserve your place today. You can register online now at mstarevents.com slash partners or call us at 877-446-3836. Welcome back to Prophetic Perspectives. I have Jason Hooper sitting in with me today, and Jason in the last segment was talking with us about some power baptisms yeah. that you guys have been having. And I have to tell you, Jason, I was looking through some footage on your website today, and I there was this little guy, Jackson, who is my that's my son's name, and it just caught my attention. And um, and he this little guy came up, and je- he co- he comes into the tank to get. Uh, baptized, but what what just had me bawling sitting at my desk was, you know, when you asked him um, to repeat after you, you know, and you're kind of giving him uh, what to say, but he, when he opened his mouth and, you know, was saying that he wanted the Holy Spirit to come and live in his heart, I just, I don't know, there's something so powerful about the most simple things yeah. 
and that just touched my heart. So I wanted to ask you just to share a little, you know, I w- you were sharing with me yesterday some of those, you know, specific stories about some of the people and just yeah. powerful things that God's been doing through yeah. baptism yeah. in your church. And you were talking a little bit in the last segment. So tell us more about that. Yeah, well, you know, um, water baptism is a powerful thing. You know, it's not just an, a, a Christian ordinance or a box that you check in your spiritual journey. It's a moment in time that we are able to release our faith and receive His grace. It's, I mean, it, when you when you begin to see the power of what it means to be buried with Christ and raise the newness of life, you know that it just it just it blows you away. It just mm-hmm. I mean it, t- it takes your breath away. And and back in November, the Lord really started speaking to me about us making preparation for the harvest. You know, and um, and how water baptism was going to be a part of that. And so as a church, I said, guys, we, we need to, you know, because we would always do, you know, baptisms, go to the creek or do this or do that. I said, we need to be ready here every service. And um, and so we went ahead and, and and built a baptism and put it into the stage. And initially we would cover it, you know, after we were done. But then it turned out we were water baptizing people every single service. That's awesome. And so we're like, well, let's just leave it uncovered. And of course, everybody jokes because everybody thought I was going to walk in it at some point <laughs> preaching. And uh, we built a, another stage for me to, to teach on so we can leave that open. And, um, and that actually came from uh, um, a lady one time where uh, it was at the end of a Wednesday night service. And she said, you know, she, she'd given her life to the Lord. And she said, you know, I want to be baptized. What do I need to be, be baptized? And I said, we'll just make an appointment with my assistant and we'll, we'll, we'll get you scheduled for an upcoming service. And that was a Wednesday. Well, all day Thursday, all I could think about was that what I had said and not in a good way and mm-hmm. Friday and Saturday. And then, so Sunday morning, you know, I, I, I called, you know, my facilities manager and I said, hey, listen, I need you to go ahead and fill the water baptismal today. And he said, man, it's cold. It's February. And he said, water's going to be cold. And uh, I said, it's okay. I said, I never want to tell somebody to come back. Mm-hmm. I want us to always be ready. And so I went to her that morning. She was at our 11 o'clock service. And I said, hey, I just want to let you know that I filled that baptismal today for you. And it'll always be filled from here on out. Mm-hmm. And so whenever you're ready, we're ready. And she said, you know what? She said, the Lord spoke to me this morning. And he told me to bring my clothes. And not to say anything to you, but to wait for you to say something to me. I said, mm-hmm. that's awesome. I said, what, you know, and so I said, what time did he tell you that? She, she told me, well, then I showed her the phone. It was exactly when I called D. Wow. And so I think it's important for us to recognize how important all of our pieces are to the puzzle of what God wants to do in a day. Mm-hmm. And that's why I say that. But you know, let me start off just by talking about the story with Jackson. Mm-hmm. Is there anybody else here this morning saying, hey, listen, you know what? I'm ready to take that step. I'm ready to be buried with Christ in baptism and be raised in newness of life. We'll kick those, kick off the shoes. You don't have any cell phones in your pocket, do you? Listen, you just jump in. Listen, Isaiah eleven six is a child shall lead them. Amen? And sometimes the most courageous people in the room are our kids. You're awesome. One more step. Tell everybody your name. Tell everybody. My name's Jackson. Jackson, what do you feel right now in your heart? What was it that, that caused you to want to come up and to be water baptized today? Because I want my life to change and I want the Holy Spirit to be in my heart. It's awesome. Let's pray that right now. That's a good prayer to pray, huh? All right. So Jackson, let's pray together. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. God, I invite you. God, I invite you. I invite you to change my life. Give me a new life. I give you my life. And I receive your life. And I receive your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. And so, Jackson, according to the Great Commission, to baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus. And we say receive the free gift of Holy Spirit.
you know, he was actually, he, he, he was not scheduled to be baptized. He's not, you know, his family is actually not even a part of our church. They are a part of another family. They're extended family um, of, of one of our family, the Purcells. And Jeremiah Purcell, one of our, one of our camera operators, part of our media team, was being water baptized that day. And the Lord's just been doing an amazing work in, in their family. And as the Lord's been doing an amazing work in the Purcells and Jeremiah was being baptized, they wanted the other family to come and to, to be a part of it. And so after I baptized Jeremiah and a few others that were getting baptized that day, I said, does anyone else here this morning just feel the Lord moving in your heart and, and calling you to be baptized? You feel, you know, and it's just helping them kind of recognize right now you're kind of feeling those butterflies. You're saying, listen, I want to do that. Is that me? And, you know, and I said, I just want to tell you, if you feel that, you can come down right now. We have clothes, you know, because we go, we purchase, you know, shorts and shirts for everybody. We're ready. Mm -hmm. You know, they have no excuse not to be baptized <laughs> if God is speaking. That's you don't have to say, well, I don't have my clothes. I don't have my towel. We have rolling carts on wheels. We're ready to baptize on mass. And. And, um, and so, but he ran down, didn't care about the short, didn't care about the shirt. And he was about to jump in with his shoes and socks and everything. Right. And, um, and I said, hey, you might want to take off your shoes and, and, and your socks and then come on in. And, hey, tell me your name, buddy. And uh, one of the things that we do, too, is I take time with every single person we baptize. Yeah. And um, I believe the most powerful prophetic word ever given in the scripture was given at the waters of baptism. When Jesus was baptized. And came out of the waters to hear, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And I've seen such transformation happen in that place of water baptism that we don't want to just run people through because we have a place to go. But, And every time we baptize somebody, it's a different encounter and it's true transformation. Mm -hmm. And you see the grace that God has appointed for their life fully released and fully received. And so Jackson came in and I just began to ask him, I said, Jackson, you know, what is your heart saying? You know, what, what, you know, what's, you know, because I believe that their testimony is important. I believe it's not just that we baptize right. according to the Great Commission, baptize the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus, bam. You know, that, that there is that application. But what's your heart say? Because it's, it's your testimony right. that God meets you at. And he just said, I want Holy Spirit to come live in my heart. I want to give my life to Jesus. Well, I didn't know, but his family's Baptist. Oh, wow. And so we baptize him and he gets filled with the Holy Spirit. So with, precious. With his prayer language. And I mean, just the whole place just erupts. And this young boy, seven, eight years old, you know, simple faith of a child, recognizing that God is speaking to him. He responds to what God is asking him to do. And God begins to move in power in and through his family. That's amazing. That just touched my heart so much. I just, tears were rolling down my cheeks sitting and watching that little buddy just respond to the Lord like that. It's just amazing what God's doing. And Thank you, Jason, for taking some time out while you're here to share and just, um, you know, and, and I'm so excited about what God's doing down there. And I'm Thank excited you. to hear more about it. And uh, we just ask the Lord to just keep doing yeah. it, keep Thank pouring you. out more, giving you guys vision. And we yeah. are looking to hear about Birmingham being taken for the Lord. Come on. So we'll see you next time. And you don't want to miss the next Prophetic Perspectives. On TV online, on the go, and on your iPad. Tune into Prophetic Perspectives with Rick Joyner, always available on MorningstarTV.com.